HR Basics is a series of short lessons designed to highlight what you need to know about a particular human resource management topic. In today's HR Basics, we explore job descriptions and highlight the three simple elements of job documentation that human resource professionals and people managers need to know. Greg's job description template was designed to clearly and concisely communicate the demographics, purpose, essential functions, and job specifications in a user-friendly format. There are many valuable tools available to assist you in the development of job descriptions. Often, templates are used to streamline the development of job descriptions in an organization. All organizations should have a consistent job description template to ensure consistency in job documentation throughout the organization. Job descriptions begin with sound job analysis. Job analysis is the systematic process of identifying the tasks, duties, and responsibilities expected to be performed in a job as well as the competencies needed to be successful. This is a process of gathering, examining, and interpreting data about a job's tasks which will supply accurate information about the job so an organization can perform efficiently. For more information, check out Greg's HR Basics Job Analysis on our YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below. Once the data about a particular job has been collected, three primary elements of a job description can be created. They include essential functions, a purpose statement, and job specifications. The first major task of writing a job description is defining the essential functions of the job. The term essential function should be part of every job description and it should explicitly state how an individual is to perform the job. On average, a job description should include four to eight essential function statements. Defining essential functions encompasses the following guidelines. First, ensure the tasks are truly necessary or a requirement to perform the job. Second, determine the consequences of not performing the function and whether or not there are severe consequences to the organization. Third, determine if the tasks can be redesigned or performed in another manner. Fourth, determine if the tasks can be reassigned to another employee. Once the essential functions are defined, the employer can make a determination as to whether the functions are essential or marginal. Each essential function statement will include responsibility statements that further define the activities of that essential function. Two to eight responsibility statements should be included with each essential function area. Organize your responsibility statements in logical order using a bulleted list. Consider listing responsibility statements in order of importance. Think about your essential functions as the buckets in which responsibility statements are carried. When developing your essential functions, use this key result area or KRA formula. The formula provides simple guidance for writing your essential function and responsibility statements. It helps you start each bullet with an action verb, making your statement action oriented. Next, you describe what action needs to be taken, asking yourself what needs to be done. Finally, you define an outcome. You describe what needs to happen in measurable terms, asking what's the result I'm looking for? When writing key result area statements for essential functions or responsibilities, use the following guidelines. Always use the KRA formula to develop essential function and associated responsibility statements. Use four to eight essential functions to describe a position. Within each essential function, define two to eight responsibility statements using bullet points. And finally, avoid using vague verbs such as handle, survey, or arrange. These are vague and do not give the reader a clear picture of the true work of the position. Our next element is the purpose statement, a concise and brief description of the reason the position exists. This statement provides just enough information about the essential functions to distinguish the position from others. The statement summarizes the overall function of the work and captures the essence of the essential functions and responsibilities of the job. It is an important part of the job description as it usually is the first part people read. You should write the purpose statement after all essential function and responsibility statements have been written using the KRA formula. When writing your purpose statements, use the following guidelines. Ask yourself, why does this position exist? 
Why does the organization need the position? Begin the statement with an action verb, followed by the results that will occur in terms of services, outcomes, growth, or program development. Use language that everyone in the organization and out of the organization can understand. Avoid describing tasks and activities. A good purpose statement is not a reiteration of the activities that comprise the essential functions. So keep the length of the purpose statement to approximately 40 to 65 words. And our last element, job specifications, include the knowledge, skills, and abilities required of the essential functions of the job. Specifications can include the education experience, physical demand, and work environment required to perform the essential functions. When defining other knowledge, skills, and abilities, consider what's required by the essential functions of the job. Job specification requirements should be consistent, consistent with department and organizational standards pertinent to the job. They should be unbiased. Requirements cannot be based upon a particular person's education, experience, or other job specifications. They should be precise. Requirements that are too high can eliminate potentially qualified applicants from your applicant pool. They should be specific. Set the requirements at the very minimum level needed to be qualified for the job, but also include the type of experience, education, or other specifications that you're interested in. And finally, job specifications need to be relevant. Requirements should be applicable to the duties and responsibilities as defined in your essential functions of the job. When writing job specifications, use the following guidelines. First, consider each essential function and identify the knowledge, skills, abilities, competencies, or other job specifications that are absolutely required in order for the employee to perform the responsibilities and essential functions of the job. When selecting the other knowledge, skills, and abilities, consider only those that are required by essential functions and associated responsibilities. Well-written job descriptions are central to the systems that manage people and organizations. From selection to discipline, job documentation provides the foundation of fairness and compliance in organizations.